In this last lecture, I want to talk about what is meant by coping and offer some strategies based on the research as to how we deal with how we can deal with stress. So um, one, one way that we can deal with stress is by relying on other people or social forces. And what people do for us is they help us um, they, they help us sort of explore. So going back to that first uh, slide where we were talking about how stress is a matter of perception, when we have other people to rely on, they can help us alter our perception, right? So, and they can help us identify resources um, to, um, to, rely, to use uh, or help us recognize that they're there to change our perception. And it's interesting that one of the findings about stress and well-being is that when people feel particularly stressed, if they're or if they're feeling threatened or depressed, giving people help can also um, helping other people in times of distress can also make you feel better. And that goes back to some interesting social psychological stuff that says. If, um, if I'm able to help you, that can alter my perception of the resources that I have. Because when I help another person, it, it becomes very clear that I have resources that maybe you don't have, and that makes me feel better about myself um, because I'm able to recognize my own access or my own surplus of resources. And if we think about coping and stress as being able to recognize our own resources, that becomes very clear. If I can give my neighbor food, well, apparently I have enough food too. To I hope that makes some sense. But people matter. There are some interesting observations in how men and women deal with stress. And if you are in a, um, if you if you are in a heterosexual relationship, right, uh, that women do what's referred to as tend and befriend. So women have a tendency when they're feeling stressed to turn to each other. So they might get on the, I like to use an example of you and your significant um, cross gender or other sex partner get into an argument and men will often go to the garage, they'll flee, they'll do what's called fight, you know, they'll, they'll flee, fight or flee. They, obviously they, they shouldn't fight, so they leave, they go out to the garage and what does she do? She gets on the phone, she calls her mom, she starts texting her friends because women are more likely to engage in what's called tend and befriend. So they turn to each other they they tend they befriend they they drop what they're doing they run to their support and men fight if they can't fight it out they flee and another part that I think is also worth pointing out is that they might that the part of the fight flight response is often to freeze so when we're under significant stress if we don't fight or we don't flee we may do nothing and that's that's part of the fight fight or flee response that we may see more in men. One explanation um, is oxytocin and the relationship to reproduction, uh, that evolutionary phenomena of how women have tended to their children and how men have, you know, done the hunting and the, the uh, done the hunting and gone away. So that may be one explanation, but it is interesting to see or to observe it in your, in your relationships. Um, coping. So coping is defined as ways that we attempt to change the situation to deal with the stressful. For our purposes, I want to talk about the distinction between what's called problem-focused coping and emotional-focused coping. And then to ask you to consider what your strategy is, or maybe you're able to identify certain kinds of stressors that you're folk that you're problem focused and others that you're emotion focused but it really boils down to this when you are confronted with a situation that requires your demands or that requires lots of energy or requires you to do something do you try to fix the problem or do you try to re to think or to reduce the emotional impact of the problem, right? I mean, one of the things that, one of the conversations I get in with my mother is I'll call her and I'll have this problem and she always wants to solve it. She's very problem focused, right? She wants to, to, to change that, to get rid of that stressor, to try to solve it. But I might be simply needing somebody to help me emotionally. Um, if, if you've had that conversation with somebody and you're like, I don't want you to solve my problem, I just want you to listen. That's because you are in an emotional, you're looking for an emotional solution 
and your mother or your father, it's more likely to be men because men are more likely to be problem focused. They're trying to solve the problem and you simply are looking for a way to deal with it. So when if emotionally focused, um, you might try to escape or avoid it, right? By denial or maybe getting drunk um, as a way to just completely not have to feel the emotion or whatever the stress is. You might want to, what does it say, emotional distancing. So you might want to, like, I'm just not, not going to talk about it right now. I don't want to think about it. That's emotional distancing. Um, or you might try. So another strategy, um, if you are emotional focused, is to think differently or to try. This is, a, this is also where um, faith can be important because when we say, well, it's God's will, right? This is a situation I can't fix the fact that my loved one is dying, but I can think differently about it. So some stressors, we can clearly focus on the problem and make that thing go away. If I have a test to study for, I mean, if I'm stressed out about my grade, I can study for a test. I can be very emotional, um, problem focused. I can solve the problem of not being prepared for a test, but I can't do that with um, the fact that my loved one is dying. I can't fix the problem. I have to change the way I feel about it because that's the only that's the only alternative I have. It probably wouldn't be a good idea if you're worried about your grade to say, hmm, I'm just not gonna think about that right now. That's not that's not gonna to yield you the best outcome of that situation. Um, yeah, so Paul, so faith can be very useful in changing the way that we think about things. You know, it's part of God's plan. Um, those kinds of of cognitive way, cognitive strategies that we can use to deal with stressful situations. Um, moving on to the next slide, some cultures. So there's also some observations. Um, collectivist cultures. What's it say? Collectivist cultures have a tendency to be more emotionally focused. Um, they have a tendency to look for way, people who are in collectivist cultures when things are happening that they um, work to, to address stressors or stressful situations by the way that they think about it. It's in our individualistic culture, we always want to solve the problem. And sometimes they're not our problems to solve, right? But we become in an individualistic culture or looking to, um, to solve the problem. And then if you look in the very last one, and I just, I wanted to make sure I highlighted this given these strange times that we're in. Um, some of these things we can certainly do in this, I don't know, this might be a fun question to leave in the discussion. I don't know, are you finding this time of quarantine or stay at home or are you finding it stressful or not? I can honestly say that there are, I'm, at the moment, I'm not finding it terribly stressful. Um, but I'm also not struggling with some of the other aspects of it. I continue to have an income. My health is good. We have food to eat. If I were unemployed, um, if I had four small children that I needed to, to school, if I had all of those additional hassles, it would probably be very stressful for me. And so my heart, um, I am aware and that people are having very different experiences. If you are finding this stressful or any other stress, of course, one thing, if you can have the luxury, make sure you're rested, right? Because sleep, that's, I am, I am known to say everything is better after sleep. Um, stress uses a lot of your resources and your body may be telling you to, to, that you need more energy and you might find that sleeping more helps you with that, with those energy. Exercise if you can, and exercise is simply good, uh, is simply good for your heart. Again, if we think about stress as it's the, the body is using up resources, anything that can promote your physical health will make it easier to deal with your cognitive with your cognitive stressors so that list is simply like how can you keep your body healthy keeping your body healthy will make it easier to manage your mind and of course it says has someone to talk to i read an article last night that was talking about how this isn't that isn't doing the same 
right? These are not the same kind of human connections um, that we are programmed, that we're built for, the kind of human connections that, that we were designed for. But um, communicating with somebody as best that you can. Hopefully you have somebody that um, in your space that you can rely on. So if I can do anything to help you during this time, manage your stress, uh, keep in mind that it's all about how we think about our situation. Um, do we perceive that, that we can manage? Do we perceive we have the resources? And um, hang in there, friends.